Hi everyone, this is Professor Dan, and this is our next video. So right now we left off with um, how to control a servo. We built a motor circuit, played around with that, and now I want to have one last piece of functionality, which is how to control a servo with something like a potentiometer. So let's get rid of our second servo here. Goodbye. Oop. All right, we're still going to want to go to this rail. Um, let's delete that. Let's just go to the, the bottom. So again, I'm Professor Dan from the University of Colorado. I'm building these videos to uh, walk students through how to use um, the Tinkercad tool in order to start to make some of their, uh, their circuits uh, virtually, because unfortunately, we are no longer uh, able to meet as a class. So I want to give people the tools and tricks to kind of get started. So we got rid of that second servo. And um, yeah, let's just test it. We have our code. Yeah, let's just delete that second servo there. Second servo there. Goodbye, second servo. Goodbye, second servo. Now we test it. Do, do, do. And it rotates. And it rotates. Oh, it rotates and it rotates. There we go. All right. So now, instead of just rotating randomly, I want to use a potentiometer to control its rotation. So, what does a potentiometer look like? Well, a potentiometer is just a variable resistor. So, I'll look it up. If it doesn't have a potentiometer. Maybe it'll have a variable resistor. Potentiometer. Cool. There we go. And its resistance is 10 k 250, but the one in our kits, and we're using the SparkFun SIK kit, is 10K. So, looks like a little, looks like a volume control. It's because in the past, they often were volume controls. There we go, got it. Had to move it a little more aggressively than I like. There we go. And so, when we have a potentiometer, we have terminal 1, terminal 2, and then the wiper. Basically, we put in a voltage at terminal one. Usually we go to ground to the other terminal, and then in between, the wiper literally wipes along a resistor, and however much of that resistor it wipes um, determines how much resistance, and if we connected the terminal one to a voltage and the terminal two to ground, it, uh, it actually makes one of those voltage dividers. So let's give it a try. We're going to, let's hook terminal one up. Let's go to red there. And then, oh, and let's actually, let's plug it into our breadboard. Why not? We got one, right? All right, so we'll plug into our breadboard. Let's go right here. All right, we'll go to terminal one directly over. And again, we have plenty of red wires. Terminal two, we'll go black. And we want to take readings from that middle one. So when we're taking readings and we're taking ranges, when we say range, we want to have an analog. And when we say readings, we want an analog read. So there we go. Click that and let's change that to yellow. Cool. I don't know why I like yellow. I just do. All right. So now what is our code? Well, we still want to have our servo stuff. But let's not do anything with it just yet. So we keep our servo attached. We still go to that library. But we want to now have a zero activated. And we want that so outputs from sensors are inputs to Arduino. Input. And now, from our previous video, we learned that we want to have an analog reading, analog read from A0, and we want to put that assigned to a variable. So let's call it pot read equals analog read. And then we want to print that out so we can see what the reading is. Serial.print. And then the little trick was to do print ln of pot. Read. We're going to give ourselves a little delay. 
Let's do 50. All right. So we're going to try it. And our serial monitor has nothing. Anybody know why? It's because we need to have we don't know that we want to read it. And that's that serial begin command. We start simulation. Oh, and now it's always reading 1023. And so if we just hook this wire directly up to power, we'll see that we're going to read 1023. And if we hook it up directly to ground, we're going to see that it reads zero. And so when our wiper is facing the red, it is all the way at 1023. As we move it all the way back, we can see that it's all the way at zero. And then linearly in between. And so what people often ask is, what if we switch? So one thing I want to do, let's get back to that. Make sure I change these black and red. So now what do you think is going to happen? Well, if we, well, if we start the simulation, now when I point to the black, see how that's pointing to the black lead? It's zero. And we point to the positive lead, that's 1023. So you can see how that works. And actually, I like I like turning clockwise, turning it up. It's kind of how volume knobs work. So we're going to keep that. Okay. So we have readings. We know our servo works. How do we put the readings from this potentiometer into the servo? And again, the power of Arduino is isolate your circuits, combine with code. So let's bring this way down. We're going to bring that way way down so yeah we don't think that there's anything there we go we're going to do that we are going to do that there we go we're just going to drag that right there there we go now we test it to make sure I didn't break it. Whoa, okay. Whoa, okay. So now we have readings that go from 0 to 1023, and our server only goes from 0 to 180. So there's a command. It's called map. And our map command takes readings from one range and puts it into another range. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to give myself another variable, int angle equals the map. I want to take plot read. I want to take whatever my reading is. And my initial values went from 0 to 1023. And now I want to make them go from 0 to 180. And let's check it. So serial print line, and let's just say angle, and let's just make sure our angles don't get too big. We do a simulation. And at 532, our angle is 90. 1023, our angle is 180. And at zero, our angle is zero. Cool. So yeah, that just is a linear interpolation, I believe is the word. It takes pot reading. And goes instead of 0 to 1023, it gives it a new range, 0 to 180. And now I just do servo one dot right, and we do the angle. Here we go. Let's kind of drag that down so we can see how we're doing. All right, so it's reading that angle as I move this all the way around. Servo matches. There we go. Pretty fun, huh? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you know, what we could do is do the same thing on a motor real quick. Yeah. So hopefully we go to our dashboard. We have our DC motor right here. I'm going to tinker that. Yeah. 
why not, right? So we have a potentiometer, we have a slide switch. Cool. Anything else we can do? Yeah. We're gonna do potentiometer, photoresistor, ambient light. Ah, let's just grab that potentiometer. All right, and let's do it relatively quick. And again, the one we have in our kit is a 10K. If you look at it really closely, you can see that. We're gonna rotate it, and we're gonna build it all the way over here. And we gotta be careful because we have nine volts going into our motor. So I'm gonna take a five volt, and we do not wanna have nine volts going into our potentiometer. So I'm gonna call that. A potentiometer. Why is that? Because we don't want to have nine volts going into our Arduino. And we can actually try that out. Bring that over to A0. Color, there's my yellow. Don't know why, just like it. All right, now in code, what do we have to do? We have to have pin mode A. A0 is an input, output from sensors, inputs to Arduino. We have a serial dot begin, 9600. We have an int pot read equals analog read A0. Serial dot print LN. Pot read. And then I might have to, you might be able to start seeing what one changes. All right, so now we're running it. We're at zero. Now we're at 1023. Pot reading is working, which is good. And now I want to use it to control the speed of this motor. So I want to have its low speed equals map pot read and we go from 0 to 1023 and now we go from 0 to anybody remember what analog write commands go to 0 to 255 and then instead of 128 we just change that to mo speed start simulation all right and we can zoom in we can see that Right there, we're at 7,000. Oh, we're cranking it. We're going to 17,000 because the motor is getting nine volts and this Arduino is only getting five. Look at that, crank, crank, crank. So one last thing we can do is what if we made a mistake? What if we didn't get five volts and we got nine volts? I think we might see a bang. Let's see, let's see if we see a bang. And then start simulation. Oh, okay. So far, so good. 1023. Oh, well, it's able to not break, but um, yeah, I would say, look at that halfway. Yeah, we're at 10, we're pinned out at 1023. I would say best not to risk it. Let's delete that and let's go. Give ourselves a nice five volt wire. It's probably because there's a big resistance on these analog input pins. That'd be my guess. All right, so we're back at it again. We're changing our speed of our motor. We'll turn it all the way down, zero RPMs. And when we actually play with a real motor, we probably, if we get below a certain threshold, wanna set that motor directly off. But in this case, um, it's working pretty darn well. We're speeding up and slowing down with our potentiometer. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed these Arduino um, videos. There'll be more to come. Um, I enjoy doing them. So anyway, I hope you are having a good day. And yeah, if you're ever at the University of Colorado, swing by, say hi, Professor Dan, E-plus program. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.